Welcome back to Word Magic. Um, <laughs> if you only knew what today has been like. Anyway, so I'm going to talk about a little about my process of starting a book today. And we will do that in a moment. First, I would like you to subscribe below if you haven't already. I've got a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. And so uh, anybody wanting to subscribe would be appreciated. You'll get the notifications when I come out with a new video. And um, if you enjoy these, well, hit that button down below. So yes, welcome back to Word Magic. For those of you who may not know who I am, I'm Yasmin Gallinorn. I'm the New York Times Publishers Weekly. USA Today best-selling author of over 65 books and countless novellas and short stories. And I have 23 years experience in the business, 20 years in traditional publishing, mostly with New York, and three years with uh, Indie. And that's where I'm at now. And I write urban fantasy and paranormal romance. So yes, that is my background. Now, before I go on further, I, I just want to tell you a little about today. So this is take five of this video. I've done this video five times. First time, I didn't realize the recording settings were still set to my headset. So there was no sound whatsoever. Second time, somehow the camera just kept wobbling off and on and going in and out of focus. Third time, I had the recording settings set too low. Fourth time, my friends wouldn't quit texting me, and I'm just going to ignore it this time. So, apparently, I'm somewhat popular, I guess. Actually, I'm on a very small set. Anyway, so this is take five, and it stands one way or another. Um, couple other things to tell you about before we get started here. One, I released a book last week, The Hallowed Hunt came out, book five of the Wild Hunt series. Ember goes through the Kruharak and she and the Wild Hunt are on the trail of a serial killer. So links are below. Run, get it now. Keep up with what's going on. And two, as a thank you to my readers, I have set the first book, in the Bewitching Bedlam series and the first book in the Indigo Court series to free. So you can go download those now and read them. Um, Bewitching Bedlam, lighthearted paranormal romance, somewhat steamy. It is not a cozy series, but it's got a lot of mystery in it too. My focus is more on the mystery than the romance, but there is some explicit language in there. Uh, Night Mist is a dark, more gothic urban fantasy and with some very, it, it verges almost on horror. Um, a lot of vampires and they know they're at the top of the food chain there. And it deals with the vampiric fae and sort of the a modernized version of the legend of the Snow Queen. So you can find the links to those below as well. I hope you enjoy them. So for my process, when I begin a book, how do I do it? What do I start? Well, it depends on whether it's the start of a new series or whether it is, whether it is, um, let's see if that works, <sighs> further along in a series. So I don't tend to write standalone books. I, build, I like writing series. I enjoy it. I love watching the characters grow over the, over the time. And uh, so let's, let's say I'm starting book two or book three of a series. First, before I start any book, I write a synopsis. And it's about two or three pages. I'm what's known as a pantser. I call it organic writer. I just like that term better. But I don't, I don't outline heavily. So I write a one or two page synopsis. And uh, at the end of the synopsis, I 
also write what character growth I foresee for each character. Paul, I'm going to pause this and put that on mute. Hopefully that will take care of matters. So I've written the synopsis and I know what I want each character to grow, how I want them to grow through the book. And the synopsis will be basically the highlights. It's like an extended blurb from the back of the book. Um, after I've done that, I print out a calendar and there's a wonderful site online that gives you the sunrise and sunset dates on the moonrise and moonset dates uh, or times for every month of the year and uh, each day. And since I deal with vampires in a lot of my books, I need to know when the sun rises and sets. So I will go and print out a calendar for the month, apparently that didn't work, for the month in which I am writing the book. Um, not the month in which I'm writing, but the month I'm setting the book in. So I will, and the year doesn't really matter, I will just print out the, the calendar and uh, then for each chapter, I write the number of the chapter in that date box of what day the chapter is on. And that's how I keep my timeline going. Um, now I hope things are set. It's a comedy of errors day, but then we are approaching Mercury retrograde, guys. So just, uh, I'm rolling with the bunches. So yeah, uh, I print off my calendar. Uh, the Silver Mist is set in December, not necessarily 2019, because books should be a little more timeless than that, I think. But it's set in a December, so I know when the full moon is, when the new moon is, when the phases are, when the sunrise is, and all that. So I will write, before I write the first chapter, I then make the playlist for the book. I know the mood the book is going to take. I can feel that beforehand. I, I sense that. I foresee that when I'm writing the synopsis. So I make my playlist based on the mood of the book. And I add in, I, I usually add in dozens of songs that fit that mood. And some I will take out eventually, and some I won't. But, um, so I've got my playlist made. And I also include some ambient music that it's supposed to help work on brain function. Um, I find Marconi Union works really well, so you're going to notice them in my latest books because I've reason recently discovered them and I find that if I can't listen to regular music and I don't want to listen to silence listening to those it's it's like white noise but it keeps me writing faster uh, obviously when I use dragon software and dictate I do not use music so when I'm dictating I don't don't use my playlist once I have gotten my calendar and my playlist down, I do a highlight list, and I'm deliberately not showing you this very well. I mean, you can see down here characters that are involved, but um, you notice basically each chapter I write down the date I think it's going to happen and the highlights of what's going to happen in that chapter. Now for some chapters, I won't get around to all those highlights in that chapter. There's just too many. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I will do then is I will just move those highlights to the next chapter. And it doesn't matter that it they may move down a bit, that, you know, I end up with five extra chapters or two extra chapters, or even if I end up putting two chapters worth of events in one chapter. Uh, the main thing is having that map of highlights so I know 
what needs to happen. So as I'm writing away, every time I finish a chapter, so honestly, probably every two chapters, I do what I call my reverse outline, which is I will take and make a bullet list of highlights of things that happened in that chapter. And I will have the chapter heading, you know, chapter 8, uh, took place on, say, December 17th, a Tuesday. I will write down sunrise, sunset date, or times, and how many days from the full moon or new moon it is. And then I will make a list of highlights of things that went on in the chapter. And I will use yellow to highlight the things that I need to tie up before the end of the book. So I will always be able to look through at the end when I'm revising the book and see, make sure that I have actually taken care of tying up all the loose ends that needed tied up in the book. Now, granted, in a series, not all the loose ends are going to tie up in every book. There will be holdover. There will be a series arc in my books. But everything that needs to be tied up in that particular book for that book's storyline that's encapsulated within that novel, I try to make sure that I get around to tying up things. When I am writing, I get faster after the first two thirds of the book. First third of the book is a bit slow and then it starts speeding up. The second third of the book can sputter. And there reaches a point where I'm just like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know where I'm at. I have to go on faith that this is going to work out. I'm not sure if everything sounds sane or not. It always does. And I always tell myself, it always works out. The book always works. You know it always works. You always go through this. Just grit your teeth. Hold on. Do the writing. Don't worry about it. So... When I reached the last third of the book, by then everything is set and everything is directed toward that end point and the writing becomes quicker for me. As I said, I am prolific. I am quick. I'm a fast writer. Uh, there are a number of us out there. And one thing I'd like to dispel is the concept that if you write fast, you can't write good. I mean, honestly, whether you are fast or slow doesn't make any difference in the quality of the writing. What matters is your experience and your voice in your writing and the revision you put into it and basically your, your own talent. I know writers who can write faster than I can and it amazes me and they, they write wonderful novels. I write faster than a lot of authors. I know writers who write one book a year, but it's an incredible book. It's all in the pacing. Everybody has their own pacing. Everybody has their own, their own approach. And you can try to pick up your pacing. And honestly, mine has increased over the years, simply because I've got the experience behind me and I've learned ways to to focus better. Um, I write with the Pomodoro technique. I focus, I, I've stopped multitasking when I write and it helps a lot. In fact, when I do sprints, sometimes I don't use music. I focus solely on the writing. Sometimes I do use it because it'll help drown out noises. Um, but I do not multitask by going online while I'm writing. I do not multitask by trying to take care of other things while I'm writing because that singular focus keeps me going quickly and keeps me in the world and it takes me less time uh, to recover from a break. Like I'll take 25 minutes write, five minute break and during that break I try not to break my train of thought per se I may watch a video that I've already seen so I don't have to think about it too much or I may just sit and breathe but I try not to get into a long conversation with my assistant or my husband who's also my assistant now. 
I try not to go online during the break because again, that will distract my focus and it takes longer to get back into the world when your focus has been, has been broken. To that end, I use a program called Antisocial and I will set it up and it can block me from websites that I find are time sinks, time sucks, not sinks, time sucks, Facebook, Twitter, and for me, eBay, a <laughs> um, number of sites. I just, I set it so it'll block those and it'll give me the option on how long I want to block them. Uh, I usually do in two hour batches and if I want to go to those sites before that two hours is up, I can't just turn off the program. I have to reboot my entire computer and I don't want to deal with that. So I just don't, you know, it's like, I find that is a wonderful deterrent. It's like, I can't get to the site. I don't want to reboot my computer. Okay. Forget it. Not going to go there. Emails, another distraction. I, tr I do not look at email when I am writing. In fact, I don't check my email nearly as often as I used to, especially now that I'm an indie and I'm not expecting anything from a publisher. Um, the Kanban board in the back, I've talked about that before. I look at that when I come in, I see what I want to get done this week. Moving the post-it notes from one column to another especially into the done column, a wonderful reinforcement that I'm getting things done. Uh, I keep track of my words per my sprint. And I've showed you how, I done, how I've done that before. Uh, you know, this is my board that I made for it. It's a whiteboard. Over here, I have, I will put the number of the words that I've already got at the start, like say I'm starting at, at word 928, I'll put down 900 words because I round up or down, depending on whether it's 50 or under or 51 or above. So 928 words that I've already written, I write 900 there. And then that'll, that'll be the first sprint, 25 minutes. I write down the number of words I wrote, again, round it up or down. Sprint two, again, the number of words. I'll show you what I do here. I love white erase boards. I absolutely love them. So, say I write a thousand words in the first sprint, and say I write 1,200 words in the second sprint. And this is possible. I've written I've written up to about 1,500 words in, in a 25-minute period. Sometimes I've written 500 words in a 25-minute period. I try not to let it worry me. This is just for example sake. And let's say during my second two sprints, I get 1,700 words done. So if I'm aiming for 3,500 words a day, which, you know, lately that has been my goal, it will look like this. So I started at 900 words on the chapter. Uh, that's where I ended up yesterday. So I wrote a thousand in the first sprint, twelve hundred in the second. That gives me twenty two hundred words for that hour. I write twenty two hundred down over there. And then I have um, seventeen hundred words in the second. So I will put that over here again. And there's thirty nine hundred words in there. Two hours. There's my words for the day and I can get on to something like marketing. So I use that to keep track of my sprints. And then I use a word count sheet in my word planner, in my writing planner, to keep track of my words per day and per month. So that's how I begin a book. That's how I start a book, and that's my process. 
So that's my writing process in terms of the actual writing. I'm not talking today about the planning out process or anything like that. We can go over that in another day. And it's different for everybody. I plan a lot in my head. You know, by the time I write down the synopsis in my head, I know the direction I'm taking. Or I know where I'm starting and through writing the synopsis, which can take me a day, you know, to write two pages of the synopsis, um, I will figure out where I'm going with the book. So that's it for today. And as I said, you know, it's been a, it's been a day. But any day where I don't have a reaction and Sam is doing well and our kitties are doing well is a good day to me. So, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be positive about it and say this video is what I needed it to be. And I will talk to you next week and subscribe and like this video if you have liked it. And, uh, well, I'll talk to you next week. Oh... Uh...